Oh my god. It's Jason, Jason Bourne. That's right. Today we are talking about the one, the only, the American mega spy, Jason Bourne. As I said in my intro, today we are talking all things Jason Bourne, and I have a very special guest with me here today to talk about this. Uh, some would call him my co-host, Old Legs Jordan Nisus. What's going on? What's up? We're going to do this? We're going to talk some Bourne? I, Bourne action? I was born again. And also some religious themes. <laughs> Look, that's the main reason... Everybody get out there, you know, go to church. B, you know, the B in born is only one letter away from C, J, B, J, C, uh, Jesus Christ. So, uh, church. Wow. I had and, no idea. And there you have it. That's it. We can end today's show. Yes. Okay. I know we're a little late to the party here, but we had some scheduling conflicts. Um, we're both busy men but we did go see jason Bourne opening night jason Bourne, the movie jason Bourne. yeah we didn't actually see jason Bourne. right he's a fictional character as far as we know i wish i wish we could have actually had that moment that might have been more fun right it w- to actually have a an oh my god it's oh my god. actually jason Bourne. <laughs> oh my god it's actually jason Bourne. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, you know, maybe to avoid some confusion, they could have named it Jason Bourne colon the movie. Yeah, I it it's uh, it felt like that. Right. It felt like. Uh, shoot it. Should we should we just start? Should we just start right here? Yeah. Let's let's just get it out of the way. We'll go through. We'll just we'll talk about it, and then we'll go over the other Bourne movies and kind of what we liked. Yeah, uh, we kind of want to. I think we kind of want to get into like why we like these movies so much, and okay. why they're, they're actually, I think, pretty important movies. Do you want to do that first? Well, we plan everything out on this show. By yeah. the way, pop the trunk, baby, <laughs> pop the trunk. Now let's go ahead. Let's let's, let's just talk about Jason Bourne. Um, Call in the movie. Yes, the movie. Yes. Okay, just okay. making sure. So, um. So Jason Bourne, uh, he comes back, uh, for those that haven't seen. Uh, so we have Matt Damon back. Um, we have Paul Greengrass back. And this has been kind of, uh, at least on the internet, talk that, you know, these two guys are kind of, I, I would say, like the masterminds of the series, or they're like self-anointed. You know, I think we can give them quite a bit of credit. but like, Yeah, and I think pretty much everyone said this is a winning formula. Right. And that there's no way anything could go wrong. Right. And they've stated, which, you know, which gives fans quite a bit of excitement when you hear, you know, when you hear them talk to and say, we're not coming back unless we have something to say, we have a story to tell. And so when we see this, we see the trailer, we see the bare knuckle, you know, Knock fist fights. Punch, yeah, yeah, I'm like we're like, okay, here we go. <clears throat> this is, you know, this is it. And uh yeah, I'd say maybe fell Maybe this face. wasn't it? <laughs> maybe face a bit. Yeah, and we can get into the nitty gritty here too, but I think it's safe to say we were both extremely excited to see this. I know it was probably your most anticipated of the year. Mm. Uh, definitely. That, uh, as far as like a, a Hollywood release, because that's kind of what I I think that's unavoidable now with Matt Damon. That any movie he's in, especially an action movie, it's gonna be like a big studio, you know, Hollywood kind of thing. So definitely on that regards, my most you know excited 
uh, I was for a film this summer. So. Yeah, and you know, let's just get it. Let's let's just get into it here. I think my initial takeaways was disappointing, um, in a word, and it just kind of. I don't know. There are parts of it that you're like, okay, let's get going. The opening was really good. You know, parts of it were really good. Uh, and it just kind of, just throughout, you're kind of waiting to get it going. And you're just kind of like, all right, like, let's do something. Let's get, let's make this feel like Jason Bourne. And it really, there were a lot of nitty gritty things that I had wrong with it. And I don't know. I, I think. I just think, yeah, disappointing. It felt, it just kind of felt lazy to me in in a lot of parts. Like the beginning, I mean, just parts of like, even just him. Like I, we were talking about it right after the movie, but when, when they zoom in on him, when they have the sniper rifle, whatever the binox, classic zoom in shot. Yeah. Well, it was just like so lazy because it went right on him, and the minute he got on him, he turns around and looks right at camera, and it's like, come on, like it, it was just annoying. And then, you know, in the other movies, it felt, you know, you felt like when he was in a crowd, like I was saying this too, is he was totally disappeared. Even in the movie, you could barely see where he was, and he was. But in this, like. Like, they don't know where he is until they know where he is. Like, they look, and he's just walking. And you can just see him plainly walking with her out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, that is not Jason Bourne. It's just little stuff like that just kept adding up. I, yeah, I, I thought it was so bizarre that, um, if you have, if you can't tell by now, we're both kind of pretty disappointed with the film. Yeah. But I thought it was really bizarre that I think they – I think they lost like the essence of the of the film. Yeah. They it didn't. I don't know how you kind of mess up the formula. Like the formula is pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Like it's Jason Bourne. He's you know he's in this cat and mouse game of basically being one step ahead of whoever he's chasing or whatever's chasing him. And this one just it didn't. It it lacked that. Like it, it I didn't. Yeah. You know at no point was I you know. Would, would I did I feel like this needed to be done like this part of the story needed no. to be told like I I didn't understand I don't understand why we're casting Alicia Vikander and and giving her nothing to do no and terrible and another kind of you know nitpicky thing is you know pick pick an accent Alicia like <laughs> Either do the Danish accent or don't. I hated it the whole way through. And I know that might be nitpicky, but it's like, you know, it bugged me the whole time. Every time she talked, it took me out of it. It's like either stay with your accent or do it fully because this, if you can't do it, then don't. I was, ooh, this, this, is the, this is the first time. This is probably like the, the probably, you know, I, w- I would equate it to the, the first argument, you know, in a relationship. Because uh, Vikander, for me, we've had a pretty uh, we we've we've been in the honeymoon stages, <laughs> me and her. Life is and this, perfect. And this is the first, yeah, this is the first speed bump for her and I because oof, wow, that was it was not good. I I don't know if it's like a if it was you know just basically a cash in like I could see like with you know this being a thing where you know she you know didn't even read the whole movie you know like probably because you know, she's in and out and you know. The, the Tommy Lee Jones thing, I, I'm, ready, uh, I'm ready for Tommy Lee Jones to, to ride off into the sunset. Yeah, oh my oof. god, he looks so old. I didn't understand it. I mean, I, I, honestly, his eyes looked like they were going to fall out of his head. Yeah, it, it, you, you, I mean, you talk about, like, things taking you out of the, the film, yeah, like, you know, no I, I thought it was distracting, like, the... It really was. I, I don't like, I don't like want to sound mean, but it was... Yeah, I, I hadn't seen anything like that. Yeah. Ooh. So how old, he's seventy years old. Yeah, he sixty nine. He's gonna turn seventy in a month. He looked. He looked ninety five. It, it was. It was like he was channeling like, like tales from the crypt. Oh god! Yeah. It was. It was. It was not good. So okay, now I know it sounds like you know we're getting kind of nitpicky, but. I would say for me, you know, if you're a fan of Jason Bourne, 
I don't know if you'll love this movie. I mean, there's parts of it that to like, but honestly, I think it it doesn't add any. If anything, it takes away from the mythology of Jason Bourne. And I think what we've kind of been tiptoeing around here is really the main problem. I think we both had with this movie is the story and the script, which you alluded to right away, was that they said they wouldn't come back unless they had a great story. This story was horseshit. It was awful. Every and they because it's basically for those who haven't seen it, you know, we're getting a little spoilery here, but who gives who cares, honestly? Like, the thing is that they have this whole subplot about that revolves around going to Vegas and this young, up and coming yes. dude. Vegas, the Vegas, yeah. Vegas. Yes. This yeah. is a board movie, yeah. not Moscow, no, not you know, no. some small town in you know, the middle of Turkey, you know, or let's go to Vegas, yeah. You know? No, yeah, it was, I mean, awful. It was just, it was, every time they brought that thing up, it it just, it the movie halted. And you're like, what is, this is not Jason Bourne. And I thought it would come in later because, you know, which it did, but not in a good way. It did not pay off. Uh, you know, when Tommy Lee Jones initially met with that dude, Riz Ahmed, I'm probably saying that wrong. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay, well... There we Riz go. Ahmed again. Uh, this this is a guy that's you know gonna blow up. You know he's gonna be a huge deal. He's already you know his work in the night of. Uh, I think he's in Star Wars. This is another guy that's like you know, I'm like wow. What what was the point here? Uh, I I think I don't know. But for me the biggest thing like I I didn't like the Vegas thing. I didn't like that we're kind of spoiling. Your, we're we're spoiling. You know, actresses and actors that you know, could have been doing other things. Um, I, I thought it was such a blatant rehash of supremacy. You know, I, I think that, I think it's almost beat for beat the same movie in a lesser fashion with less Jason Bourne in it. Right. Yeah. And, and again, yeah, the, I, I took issue with, you know, Matt Damon too. That I, I feel like this was probably the, the most distant we've been from Jason, Jason Bourne. Yeah, like he has like what? Is, he can't more, have more than twenty five lines of dialogue. Like, yeah, if that, yeah, and he just he looked old too. He also looked old, right? Yeah. But yeah, and it, he wasn't even the main character. It was Alicia Vikander, and her morals were so muddy. Normally, that sounds cool, but it wasn't because she was like it. Really, they did not play that off very well, just, and yeah. it just didn't work. And you know, the best way, like. I think it just it just felt lazy the whole way through, and it's like, you know, there was a story that had come out a while ago, when you know what also you alluded to. I'm alluding to alluding to you alluding to, okay. uh, when uh, I, I Green understand. Grass. I did you get that? Okay, good. I'm glad we're on the same page. Okay, so when Green Grass said that he and Dame weren't going to come back unless they had a good script, blah blah blah. blah. Well. What be the reason they said that was because when they made Supremacy and Ultimatum, uh, they did not ever have a finished script. They didn't even really have. They had. Right. They there was a there was a script, but they kind of just said, "Yeah, well." Whatever. It was yeah. It was not finished. They Green didn't. Grass is just I, he's you know I'm he just, just do what right. I want, you know, and there wasn't there weren't storyboards ready. They honestly were on the run. And like I had said to you, I think that that really that really leaked into the story and you felt like you were with Jason Bourne, kind of that sporadic energy that on the run, which you should feel as a spy and kind of like, you know, and you were really with him the whole time where this one, it re they really leaned on that story a lot. And, you know, I think that they kind of got a little comfortable in that chair saying, Oh, this is a modern issue. We're going to weave this in so well, you know, we finally have a story I think they really leaned back and thought, wow, this is kind of nice. And just kind of, I think art is at its best when there's obstacles and when you have to be, right. you have to double down on your creativity to get around obstacles, you know, instead of just making it easy and sitting back on yourself. Right. Yeah. I, it was, it, it, it really, really, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why they, I, I get it. I think this movie made money. Do you know? We can. I'll look right now. I, I assume it made money. Um, I I don't think it flopped. It won. For, it won the opening weekend. It came out. Right. So I mean, 
So I mean, yeah, you know, good good for those guys. You know, they made money, but uh, that kind of brings us into kind of the larger the larger kind of why we wanted to talk about this series in, in that like what why is this important why you know are we so disappointed what's what's the big deal you know like you know That's fourth true. movie in you know you have a dud okay yeah so yeah it made yeah it so it's it domestically it's almost made its budget back but worldwide total it's not as popular other places but it's made about it hasn't and I guess you don't take into advertising with that, but it's it's almost broken even, and it really it's only been out for a couple weeks, yeah. so it'll make it'll make its money back for sure. So that's yeah, so that's good, I guess. I yeah, I, I think that yeah, I, I think what we we're going back to like, so you bring it back. So the the series in general, what is what like, I'll ask you first, like what. What is the the Bourne series for you? Like, what do you think of when you think of Jason Bourne? When you think of the um, I. That's kind of a broad question. Um, when I think of Jason Bourne, I think of the blueprint, and well, I, I guess I think of the modern spy, and the realistic espionage of what a spy would look like in today's world. Yeah. American and, Bond. Yeah, American Bond and the gritty realistic um the blueprint for the modern action movie as well, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I I would agree. I yeah, I it, for me again, yeah, this is like this is post 9/11 kind of uh, an action film that I don't think we had seen in a while or we hadn't had mm -hmm. and yeah it, it's a, it's a really interesting thing because um it, yeah because there 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 is so much that you see in our films today you know like you watch a Christopher Nolan movie and the action scenes you know any type of hand to hand combat <laughs> is pretty much you know straight out of a green grass you know Born. shaky yeah the shaky cam the frantic you know style uh we love that you know and that's when like it's all where that comes from. done well a lot of times you see uh, most of the time you see it really poorly done when they don't have good stunt coordinators right. but yeah when it's done well it looks great because it feels like you're really in there and in the action but it got way too popular where they started cutting like crazy i mean and you have no idea what's going on right. if you want to see the worst example of it look up the aaron cross i believe is the movie either aaron cross or alex cross i mean it might be alex cross is it, uh, jack reacher no <laughs> uh <clears throat> best picture winner right best picture winner. of yeah jack reacher he didn't get nominated does it mean he can't win can't uh no uh it was I, well I think it might have been Alex Cross not Aaron Cross with uh some unknown white guy and Tyler Perry in a serious detective role which he did terribly in of course but the final fight in that I've just seen it on YouTube and it is the worst the worst the Alex worst Ferguson. yeah it's terrible I mean you literally I think it it's zoomed in on somebody the back of somebody's shoulder for most of it and it's just it's terrible. Yeah. I feel like you were making a point and then I um cut. yeah, about really just kind of kind of the series in general. Um so for me, I get I guess this is an easier question and an easier topic, but uh the favorite, you know, mm -hmm. I would probably give my favorite movie to the first one. I know a lot I know a lot of people like Supremacy. Um I don't know what it is. I, I like identity. I like the, I, yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of shaking your head a little bit. I, I, uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, it's like a, it's like before midnight action movie, basically. It, yeah. It's kind of a love story, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's the, it's a love story in the sense that, you know, Die Hard is a Christmas movie, I should say, you know, yeah, one of those. Yeah. And the reason I honestly my jaw dropped there and i was amazed because that is also my favorite really? born movie yes 
And I had thought for sure that yours was the second one or the third one. But I I think we're both in the minority when we say the first one's our favorite. Because, honestly, the first one has, old, like, <clears throat> I'm fairly new to the Bourne uh, series. I had known about it, obviously, through pop, pop culture. But really, I'd only seen them a few years ago. And I watched all three of them in a day. And I was like, wow, these are amazing. But the first one... Yeah, I agree. It really like I just love the how it's the story just really sucks you in and you know, I just love that's got to be one of the best openings ever is just some dude just floating yep. in the ocean. I yep. mean, how great is that? I love it. And he he doesn't know anything about himself, you know. And it's just it's just a really great exploration. And yeah, like him meeting this girl they have a lot of great conversations and she's she's just honestly some random stranger and he gets her into trouble and then you get that little taste and you know in supremacy they did it really well whereas um chris stuckman he's a obviously a famous re- movie reviewer on youtube m- my favorite he recently just reviewed all the borns um in lieu to this newest one so and what he had kind of said, I I agree with, and he just said that, like, the Born Identity, the first one is, like, kind of more of a drama, you know, almost like, it's a thriller, but it's, it's more of, like, the characters, like you said. And then the second one is more of um, a suspense movie, you know, the thriller. And then the third one is is more of the action movie, you know, the great action. But, yeah, the first one I love, and it's also directed by Doug Lyman, who's one of my favorite directors. I think he's really underrated. Uh, he is He's a fantastic uh, director. He's done a lot I of agree. good hits. But, yeah, the first one is great. Like, and it almost feels European, even though it's American. Just, like, when he's scaling the walls, you know, and he's in that that whole scene is amazing when he's in the embassy trying to get away and absolutely and i feel like i it you know obviously these movies are you know escapism at its best and that was another reason i was so put off by you know the the vegas you know final yeah. kind of boss battle whatever you want to call it yeah. in the last one because these movies are these movies are globe you know expanding you know it's it's interesting to see some place that you haven't seen before it's like oh wow like you know half of these mm-hmm. countries he's going to and cities i'm like wow is that even like a real thing like you know, <laughs> i don't know uh, yeah <laughs> i'm like oh, that kind of sounds made up i need like, some I, and your... I need some national monuments yeah uh, i don't know <laughs> yeah it, 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 it's it's really interesting yeah like you said it's it feels european it's you know it feels exotic mm-hmm. and yeah you're just being strung along on this kind of frantic journey and you're right with him when you're figuring out stuff about him that he knows. And when he realizes he can do stuff, that's great stuff. Like when the cops come up to him on the park bench, that is awesome. When yeah. he just he, he kicks their ass and he just he's like, What well, what just happened? Like it was just muscle memory and um yeah, I mean it it's he has the, the old boy the, yeah. the old boy moment. <laughs> the, can I learn to fight yeah. <laughs> from watching T V Oh, Chica. It's good. It's good stuff. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I'm I'm honestly I'm really that. really surprised. Yeah. Uh, we. I, I'm a sucker. I'm a I'm a sucker for the romance, man. I, that uh, is true. I thought they had it. It really did, and it's kind of that's a good lead-in for the second one. Um, um with a darn Carl supremacy. Urban, man. He a darn I, Carl Urban. Right He's away. Up. Right away, like you said, the romance. Paul Greengrass. That's the first thing we're gonna get rid yeah. of. Uh, yeah, let's uh, with let's, let's clear the deck. Yeah, right away, dead, <laughs> just dead. And the one thing that really stood out to me when I rewatched it uh, was like, I mean, <laughs> I, this is a dumb thing, but like, I didn't know they were gonna kill her, you know. And yeah, I'd really fallen for her. Like, she's this great character. She's really interesting. Like, I don't know, she was a really good character and helped him a lot in the first one. So you ha- so her death really hit hard for me, um, especially like, and I don't really know her name. 
Oh, yeah, we should probably pull that up. Um, yeah, I don't know. IMDb is being... There we go. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I watched it was, like... I mean, the first time I watched it, they changed her hair because she had, like, this shorter, dark, black, you know, a little bit right. red in it hair. And, uh, you know, I'm a sucker for short hair, I, f- I found out. And I loved it. And then the second one, she just got this generic, long, blonde hair. And I'm like what is going on? Like, you're not cool anymore. You're just some generic blondie. And then she gets shot in the head. Yep. And that's another great, like, thing rewatching. And that, and the, I, the supremacy is great as well. I love Carl Urban. Uh, my favorite, Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite movies ever to like all of them. But the second one, the two towers, my favorite, my favorite character has always been a Amir played by Carl Urban and I've loved I just love Carl Urban naturally he's great and he makes he plays a great villain here but like one of the things these movies do really well is they really incorporate logic like well and I and that's one of the things I really appreciate about this movie was when Bourne was driving the jeep to try and get away from him he was like you drive so I can see or you know coordinate or whatever so they switch seats obviously Carl Urban wouldn't know that and that's the reason he shot her because he was just aiming for the driver, you know, and all that dr- frantic. And it's like that's a great that's a great thing. Like, and the only dumb thing is that he walks away, like every villain does. He doesn't check. He's like, ah, oh, he's dead. Whatever. Yeah. Like, good enough. I got a pretty good feeling about yeah. this. <laughs> it was whatever. Yeah. He's just cocky. Yeah. Classic. Classic X. And he went straight to straight to a strip club. Okay. I think he stayed there until they got him. <laughs> this is there. The rest of the time, yeah. I was just yeah, kidding. I, uh, I, I, I agree. So yeah, we're talking about the supremacy now, and uh, yeah, it, it's for most people. Yeah, it is the exclamation point in the series. I think I'm, I'm almost. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in a world where we don't need three of everything, you know, I think this would have been like a perfect end of the series almost. Okay, you are wrong, but go ahead. <laughs> and and that, that's not to say I don't like Ultimatum. I um, I definitely feel like it's it's third for me, you know, out of the three. Um, but yeah, it, it's so I feel like I feel like the supremacy is so tightly wound, and mm-hmm. it's so clean, yeah. and I f- I really like where we leave all these characters, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it feel it feels right, you know, and, uh, and, and yeah. So the thing, okay, you said I am correcting you. You are wrong, okay. but the thing is that uh, what I love what they did with the ultimatum was they put it halfway in between supremacy, so it's taking place at the same time supremacy is for part of it, which is really cool because it kind of starts with that car crash and then right. you know seeing. Liddy or whatever her name is. Is that right? The character name? Liddy? Who? Uh, the Joan Allen? Joan Allen? Landy. Pam. Landy. God. Pam. I was so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yep. Yeah. Cue uh, music. Uh, yeah, so that was great. And, and the ultimatum really has a lot of great action, but it really brought, like, the per- supremacy was dark and really on the run thriller and it was fantastic and the third one you know it has a lot of great action and it really brings the story full circle for me you know you find out a little bit more about who he is you know he does more born stuff and i just love the symbolism of you know you start out floating in the ocean by yourself not knowing anything and you end up, he finds out about his past, you know, and then he volunteered and everything. And then after he finds everything out, he falls in the harbor and he's also back right. in the water. Almost the yeah. same. It was just, yeah. it was such perfect symbolism. It was like, I, I really, and you know, water being the symbol of cleanliness and health and, you know, rebirth and holy water. You know, I, it's just I, like, I, I agree with that. It's I, just a great, it's a great rounding. I do, thing. yeah, you are right. I do like that. Uh, that is that it's a good point that it does really bring it all around. Uh, I feel like the ultimatum, it's a very like no stone unturned kind of movie. It's like it, if this is like about the 
the maximum amount we can you know mm-hmm. squeeze out of treadstone it's like oh there's yeah you know, there's another program and, and I start another one and there's another older and, white guy yeah they're they're the management they're, yeah it, it's so I, I you can get a little tiresome and again it brings us back to you know why the fuck did they make another one yeah that's a good point uh <laughs> Because oh man, it, I, you know, the the fact that you know you could have ended this series at two, three was you know, I think pretty pretty luckily good, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, it just it, I'm still I'm still really <laughs> bummed about yeah, it. Yeah, I can tell. I'm still super bummed. Yeah, and the thing is, I don't know. Yeah, I just don't know why they did it and why they thought. It just seems like such a departure from the series. Cause this is, I mean, like, for what it is, you know, it's an it's an action movie for adults. It know? really is. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a thinking man's action movie. Right. And we we didn't really have that before this series starts, and I really want to see more of this. You know? Yeah. And did I ever? Um, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but uh, that's a great picture. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I pulled something up here distracted me. I can't do two things at once. Uh, never tell you that one time I, w- I was talking to my grandpa, and I was kind of talking about movies. You know, he's an awesome guy. He's really cool and stuff. But I wasn't really sure. You just never know. You know, like his favorite, I think his favorite music artist of all time is like Patsy Cline, you know, an old mm. country singer. Oh, yeah. Um, and Beautiful voice. Really, pretty good. She did okay, you know, uh, but I just, I expected, you know, whatever. And so I, one time I asked him what his favorite movie of all time was, you know, a lot of people say, Hey, that's a bullshit question, which it is, you know, but it's important to think about, I think. And I think it says a lot about who you are, but he said without hesitation, born identity. And I was like, wow, <laughs> I did not expect that. And he, he totally was just like, yeah, it's great. And just listed all the stuff. I was like, "Wow, I can't really fault you on that." Like, and it, yeah. I mean, my grandpa's a pretty cool guy, if you couldn't tell. But I just pulled up what Paul Greengrass has done as a director. You know, not a lot of great stuff here. Um, you know, the United ninety three. I haven't seen it. I've heard it's a movie that you should only watch once because apparently it's this great drama about the um, 9-11, but apparently it's extremely accurate and dark, and most people who've seen it say you only need to watch it once. Um, But after The Born Ultimatum, he had Green Zone, which I think universally people did not like, Captain Phillips, which I didn't like, you didn't like, most people liked and now yeah and then now jason Bourne. so he's really not done a lot of good stuff lately um the green zone i just heard like why are you doing this instead of another born you know and then i think he's probably like all right let's just go back to born that should be a you know a no look swish you know a michael jordan at the free throw line but didn't happen yeah so, okay, so now that we're we're kind of at the halfway point here, I think, you know, we had talked about doing a pitch and catch about where we kind of want Bourne to go, but we had, had one small discussion before, and we kind of agreed that I think we're both kind of, are we done with Bourne? Is this it? I I can't see a reason to come back. Um, it would be really sad to see another one made because I, A, don't think I could get as excited about it, uh, and B, I, I don't, I, I, I really don't, I, obviously I'm not like a creative minded, you know, Hollywood, you know, kind of person that just thinks up this stuff, you know, and like, oh yeah, here's a new little adventure for Jason right. Warren to go on, but I don't. I, I don't think there's any more story to tell, you know. I don't either. I didn't think there I, was I after the third one. Yeah, I, I I'm just I'm 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 done with Treadstone, you know. I I don't need oh. any more background. I don't need another 
guy, you know, to go you hunt down. Don't want a Vegas too. I, uh, you know, I, we I need to know more about that. You know, that just you brought that up and it reminded me. Another thing I hated about this newer one, it was it was almost insultingly bad, was the addition of his father. Like how yeah. effing terrible was that? I hated that. And it's a blah blah blah. blah, blah. Is they made it so that his dad, David Webb's father, was the one who created Treadstone. Unknowingly, I, he, I didn't really understand it. He was like, he was like, hey, I found this. You know, they were like, hey, you should do something with making better soldiers or whatever. And he's like, okay. And then he did. And then they were like, hey, your son's a good candidate. And he's like. No, I don't want my son to do it. And then his son becomes the best ever. Pretty much the only one that worked out. But it was just so mind-numbingly uh, related. It was almost like it was like incest to me. Like It was like, stop making this smaller. And to make it even worse, to make it worse, the villain they introduced in this one, you know, they always call him the asset, but they said it uh, way too many times. And he was just, whatever, some faceless person foreign yeah, guy on his way. right i have a name you know yeah <laughs> it was you know whatever but yeah he's just some faceless villain and to make it even worse they had the audacity to say this this brand new guy killed was the one who killed his father on the same day that his father was gonna shut this down which you know oh that's what got him to become born it was like all this happened within an hour this one day it was so stupid. It was so, so stupid. I hate, hate, hated it. And, and, and yeah, and and this was either. I mean, there's not a whole lot to go off besides you know like the very almost too topical, um, you know, security kind of uh, cyber security, cyber security and kind the of the government were going watching on. us. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, that was very topical and everything, but I, you know, I get that, but. Hey, they're listening right now. Shout out to you, NSA. We we here at the L Squared Pod. We love America. Uh, Snowden, Snowden's bad news. You really do. Wow, that's not that's a really real thing. Snowden's bad, folks. Uh, what can I say? All right, go back. I think we're good. Uh, yeah. Outside of that, there this kind of father wrinkle and him being kind of the the ethos of the Treadstone program is basically all they brought back that i think this was their revelation like the oh we have to get this out we have to you know because yeah what else was there bars that's yeah. my reaction yeah it so i mean yeah so obviously you know yeah your movie's gonna suck if you know like the the one golden nugget that you think you have is actually a turd actually shit it's kind of like you know let's have and that's really a I think, yeah, I think that's really like a big reason why this movie doesn't work. Yeah, because that was totally the big thing that was supposed to be the shocker, and it, you know, um, it just kind of fell flat. It on really fell flat, and it kind of. Oh, I'm sad. It's almost like I hate talking bad about Born, but it's almost like it had to be done. it's almost like hey, let's let's make Anakin Skywalker be the inventor of C-3PO, like. Why not just keep making the world smaller uh, after everything we do? But we don't need to bring the prequels into this. There. I like where you're going with this. Yeah, let's keep just... You're saying there's another program? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worse than Treadstone? Worse than Treadstone? <laughs> that we still haven't found oh out? Oh my god, it's there's just some more. And there's another older, whiter guy in charge of this one? An even older man. <laughs> <laughs> even whiter. Shout out, shout out to our uh, shout out to our guy who got the who got the Jason oh my god it's Jason Bourne line black dude let's uh, find him I, I I think that maybe that might have been the uh, the and he was in the, the apex was, performance what I liked about that was it was totally in the background normally that's the big thing like other people were talking and he just said it and you're like holy shit like yeah. normally we're over there when that happens like. <laughs> Yeah. He was just in his own world being amazed. Jason Bohr was up on that guy. He wasn't up on anybody else. Like, yeah. normally we follow that guy who doesn't know what's going on. But he was in the back or like, who oh, is this guy? He's so amazing. <laughs> I, I, everyone I, think, else I think it's was... a problem when this guy, when when our guy, uh, Go for Edo Asanado, 
when our guy Craig Jeffers, yeah, character, character name. When Craig Jeffers is the only guy that's that's that's, that, that's scared. Yeah, he's the, like, literally the only hey one. Hey guys, like this is the only let's, guy that's got any semblance of of, yeah. of what we're dealing with let's, here. This is Jason Ford. Let's, like, let's move the camera a little bit to the right. Uh, let's pick up some of his reactions. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, guys. this this guy's amazing. Ah! <laughs> How does he keep getting away? Come on, like, why, why, why would, why was he the only one in Amazing? Let's, thing? let's like, you know, what? people say Spielberg is the best director, period. But like, at really picking up like reactions to things, like if you look at Je- Jurassic Park, most of that movie's reactions, which is fantastic. But it really makes you feel in awe and just like surprised. There was none of that in this movie. But by, by him, but he was in a broom closet the whole time. He was just in, like, oh, it was, and that's, yeah, it made Bourne feel like nothing because nobody gave a shit. People, you know, that Alicia Vikander was like, oh, whoever, I don't care, I'm this new person. Tommy Lee Jones like, I hope I don't have a heart attack while I'm talking to you right now. You know, it looked like they were having clothespins hold his eyes open. Folks, it was bad. I mean, his skin was falling off. Like I said, I, I feel... I feel bad. I don't. I don't like talking bad about this series. I don't like talking bad about really any of these people in the movie. I, I love all these people that were in this film. Me like, too. You know, f- a- a- everyone from you know, you know, Vikander, Damon, you know, uh, our queen Julia Stiles, like you know, the anointed one. I, I, Tommy it's, Lee it's is really, is it's a really legend. Sad. It's really sad to like you know kind of see these people you know be put through this, but. Uh, yeah, they had to do it. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't good. If we, so. if we had else? to, let's try and rate it here. Let's do it out of, let's say out of ten. You know, because there were some. I mean, I know we're really taking it behind the woodshed here, but there were some good parts. The opening motorcycle scene was really good. Um, and then the final fight, I wanted more of that. Like the final fight was great. Uh, just the fight alone, not the villain was du- was terrible, but the fight itself, choreographed and shot, was really good. I was like, that's what I want more of. But like, there was one opportunity in the beginning when he followed this idiot with a dumb sweater. It was like, we should team up. I hated that guy. It was terrible. They had a fight, and it was the it was the worst. It was like this. I was like, this dude has a chair. They broke the chair. I was like, we're gonna get some cool wood action. He's gonna beat him up with a piece. It wasn't punched him and he was out and he got hit with a weight and he just yeah. shrugged that off like oh that could have been so cool yeah. if that action scene would have been better and they had two really good action scenes i would have liked it a lot yeah. more there was no uh there was no uh beating up with a with a phone in, book. In, yeah no there, there were no phone no, book. no phone books were, were harmed in <laughs> making this film <laughs> there was no pen disappointing there was no pens. The great part about supremacy, the one that really makes you stand up and cheer, is like when in the middle he beats the – he takes a newspaper, a magazine to a knife fight and wins. He beats the dude up with a it's fucking of, magazine. It, yeah, it's it, great. It's one, of, it's one of the, yeah, probably classic, you know, action scenes. You know, oh, essential yeah. action scenes. Ever. I, I think my favorite part about that scene is I, – I don't know if it's un- intentional and I don't even know if – many people notice it but um the first couple times he hits him with the magazine he's like almost surprised yeah like he's like what the hell like what are you doing ah, i like that actually really hurts like he's actually <laughs> taking him by surprise like jesus like this guy's got a freaking this guy's got a dude, that's just a magazine it's, like what is this it's, it, it's, it's national I, geographic versus I, I, I think i'm remembering that right but the look on his face is like this like hell? yeah this like look of surprise like jesus am i getting like beat up <laughs> by a guy with a magazine yeah and it's like yeah and then he puts it in a toaster and burns the house down blows yeah. it up it's like that's so it's, good it's, it's, in the first one the pen the dude's swinging around the mm-hmm, machine gun mm-hmm. beats him with the pen just out like oh and then yeah the third one the third one is like if nothing else that rooftop chase when he's r- sprinting down those rooftops, jumps through the window and beats the dude up with a book. Like, oh man, that's such a great action scene. And there was none of that in this newest one. It is. There's usually a great car chase scene. There wasn't. I mean, the one in here was re freaking ridiculous. And and one of the things about all the other car chases too. I know I'm 
brought up this tangent that I didn't bring up before, but they were so great because he was he was in ordinary cars, yeah, just normal car, just normal car. Like, why would there be a brand taxi. new, yeah. state of the art car for him to take? Like, it was normal, and they got beat up. They looked they looked terrible, and that's what would really happen. In this one, the first car scene, he's in a brand new Dodge Charger, like right away. I'm like, come on! And then he gets in this tank. Who's just plow? You know, the tank is just plowing over cars. It has a car ram on the front for whatever reason, and then he it, and then he crashes and nothing happens to him. It was so generic and by the numbers, it was terrible. But we should I probably think give this. I think we were gonna try and give it a rating, we're yeah. Before I'm really some of these emotions are I'm bubbling looking, up again. I'm looking for a number. So if I'm I had thinking. to do it out of ten, and I don't know how I got onto that tangent, but if I had to do it out of ten, I would probably go. It's hard because I don't like. I think I'm gonna go like. I'll go like five point eight. Like I really, there was parts in there that I hated, um, and there were parts that were, the parts, the best parts, were parts that could have been better. Honestly, in my opinion, I think it. Yeah, I think it didn't add anything to the to the story I think it took away from the mythology which is like the worst which is like a crime against humanity in my book so I would give it like a 5.8 simply because there's some good action and you can watch it as a Jason Bourne movie but it'll just take away from you so that's what I'm going to say up to you my turn yeah five wow I this movie's I have issues remembering movies like I, I can see myself completely forgetting, you know, that this was ever a movie within, you know, the next couple months. It happens quite often. Yeah, uh, it, it's sad, but uh, yeah, I, I, very forgettable. Uh, uh, an uncharacteristically uh, departing uh, chapter. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I just, I didn't get it. I didn't get why they came back. It's not a clean. The, the father, the father thing didn't do it, and the yeah, I, I the the technology aspect felt a little too on the nose. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I I don't know. I, maybe maybe it's time to hang it up because that one wasn't fun. Yeah. Maybe it's time for us to hang it up as well. Yeah. You know, final thoughts. Kind of lazy. Pretty pretty disappointing for both of us um i think if you're a born fan i would stay away from this because it takes away from it but thank you guys so much for tuning in to, to today's episode all about jason Bourne. check out the original trilogy it is phenomenal it's one of the best trilogies ever they all still hold up check me out on twitter at uh, luke larson 89 you can find us on twitter at l squared podcast also on facebook uh, the l squared podcast do you want to be found yet or are you still in the dark in the dark man Jason, Jim Jason born again. For real. Off the grid. His father invented uh, whatever platform we're running. He was like five minutes away from telling me about it. And then he got blown up by this evil guy. I can't really it was kind of fuzzy. There was a weird sepia tone. It was a CGI skinnier bird. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate the support. And we'll see you in the next one.